Hey everybody, I'm Lance Koike. Today we're going to talk about a, a really common mistake in the pull-up, and that is doing most of the pull-up but not finishing at the top, right? So why, why would someone do this? Well, if you don't have good shoulder mechanics and you don't know how to do a row, it's really common for you to not load the muscles that help you do the row in a really safe position, but <laughs> instead avoiding and using your pecs to kind of tilt your shoulder blades over like that. And when you do that, you just can't pull up all the way. Like no matter how hard you try, you're either going to hurt your shoulder and get it, or you're not going to get it. Um, I don't mean to like say that doing all this is terrible for your shoulders or whatever. Um, I just, you gotta, if you're gonna get to the top of the bar, you gotta get your shoulders back a little bit. And that's what gives you that extra, that you know, those last three or so inches that get you all the way up there. Now, why is this important? Uh, the reason that I would, that I encourage pretty much everyone to do this is because it's just general good shoulder mechanics. If you can do it loaded in a pull-up, I'm more confident that your shoulder is not gonna hurt throughout the day. Um, yeah, like even if you do have shoulder problems, if you can learn how to do this, then it might be really beneficial for you. Uh, why would I not? cue this. So this isn't something that I think people talk about that much. Sometimes I'm not too worried about it. One, you're new to pull-ups and I don't want to make it any harder than it already is. This is like the hardest body weight exercise that you could think of, right? You're pulling your entire body weight up. Most people in this world have never done a pull-up in their lives, is at least in the last 10 years, you know. Um, and you know, I want you to still work on your fitness. I want you to get stronger and I want you to like doing it. Um, so I'm not going to be super stickler about it too much. Uh, and then what else? If, if I'm trying, if I'm getting a cue and it looks pretty good and it still hurts, then I'm just going to say, okay, you don't have to come up that far. And that's totally fine. Simple as that. Uh, and then uh, I think this is the third one that I would not use it on, but maybe you've already done eight reps and you've done them really good, but I want you to force a little bit more out. I want you to force more fatigue into your muscles. Uh, you're, the only way you're gonna do that is by getting reps that don't quite look exactly the same because it's really difficult to hold yourself up here at the top of the pull-up, but it's a lot easier to get here. You can probably knock out you know, 10 more half reps after doing you know, 10 full reps. So you have you have to consider that this is just an element of forcing more reps out of your body, forcing more fatigue into your body. And, you know, we've talked about this before with hypertrophy you know, strength wise is is not, you know, it's one thing. And that's not what we're talking about here. Hypertrophy wise, if I want to build muscle, I need a caloric surplus, a protein surplus, diet, 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 and I need uh, to stress my system during my workouts. I need to push myself into reps that I'm not quite sure if I can get. Okay, it doesn't, you don't need to do sixes. You don't need to do sets of 10. Uh, you don't need to do sets of 15. Like not one is better than the other. You just need to push yourself and, you know, maybe do all those different types of rep ranges at some given point in time. Um, but that's a really common mistake. If you do it, no hard feelings at all. Um, just, you know, appreciate why you're doing it. If you're, if you do it on rep one, you probably need to figure something else out. You probably need to lower the weights, check the ego a little bit at the door. You can assist yourself with a band, having that pull you up to the bar. You can have somebody help push you up to assist you when you get maybe tired later on in the set or maybe even throughout the entire set. My favorite is just if you have the machine do a lat pull down machine, it's pretty similar. You don't have to worry about what your legs are doing and rounding your back out the right way. And you can just kind of focus on getting the, uh, the nice pulling motion there. Those are just a couple ways to unload yourself. And, and there's some really nice machines that actually have a weight that like counterweights you up. Those are great. Um, I don't always like them because they get in the way of what your feet are trying to do, but whatever, no more than a band does really. Um, so give it a shot. If you can already do some pull-ups and you can get yourself there all the way, um, 
consider that maybe you can force a couple extra reps out, maybe doing half range or three quarter range, not quite getting your chest all the way to the bar. But uh, on your first couple reps, especially, I want you to make sure you're getting all the way down there. So you're training those upper back muscles, the trapezius, um, even some of the serratus anterior helps you with a little bit of the uh, positioning there of the, the shoulder blades externally rotating for all you trainers out there. Um, but yeah, work on it. <laughs>